Hello YouTube. Right, this one. Project Pirate Chest. Now I've, um, you know, Pirate Chest, piratey. Yes, that's definitely a good thing. It's good fun. Um, so I thought I need some storage. Um, I could buy plastic boxes from wherever, but they're just not, they're, they're plastic boxes and they're dull. And uh, I needed some storage, and I was going to do some um, just basically simple packing crates and make them look pretty. <clears throat> but then I thought, oh, I saw on YouTube um, some people making pirate chests, and I thought, well, it's not that hard. And what could I do? Also, I've got absolutely no budget. In other words, I've got to make this from what I've got lying around. And I've got some donated wooden bits and pieces from various places. So I thought, this would be a good project. Um, I'm going to be doing this project off the top of my head. There is no design. Absolutely no design or whatsoever. In other words, I'm going to make it up as I go along. And this is actually normal for me. I have an idea in my head. And I just go through the motions, and generally I find that 99% of the time it works pretty well. Uh, anyway, looking at the materials I've got, let's see. I've got basically this uh, 2B1, yeah, 2B1 wood, which is actually from, it's not actually 2x1, some of it's actually 3x1 by, by the look of it. Um, but it's basically, this is from a sofa that I used to sit on, I think it's one of my other videos. Um, they got a new sofa, and um, they said, could you get rid of the old sofa? So I basically said, well, I could break it up and you can take, it to, take the bits you don't want to the tip. But there's a lot of good wood in there. And this is the, the wood. And so I've got two long pieces which need, if you have a look, it's got all sorts of crap in it. Actually... I've just found something I can use for my hinges and probably do something with that but um, basically I've got to get all the crap out I've done it with the with the other stuff so I've already cleaned these ones up and I've got these little bits here of all recycled materials all materials that were used in other jobs and I can now use here stuff which should be which is nice but I've also got this tongue and groove um, tongue and groove yeah tongue and groove uh, cladding as you can see there um, got quite a lot of this but not enough to make the amount of storage I needed but enough I think to make a pirate chest so basically I've got all this if I get a particular piece which you can see there so it's all been used before, it's been stripped off, so it's all scrap wood, and I can use it. So, uh, so we're going to see if I can clad it up. The lid's the most challenging part, but if I can clad it up, it'll look quite good as a, as a, as a, as a storage pirate chest. Um, for bits and pieces, as I say, I've got loads, loads scrap. I've got all sorts of things. So, I do believe uh, I've got angle, this I actually made for use on my trailer and I actually made it just out of flat aluminium. Um, but I've got loads of different pieces that I can use. Here's my other box of basic scrap. So I've got this stuff. You might be able to find use for that. I've got this. You know, I never really throw anything away. That could be useful. Uh, when I, when I, even with a sofa, I will strip the useful bits out of it and then take the rest of it to the tip. So it is basically simple recycling. And so that's that's pretty. I'll probably find a use for that. Um, I think I could probably find a use for that. But yeah, so. I'm basically using what I have lying around to make this chest. So, we'll get to building. Right then, we've got the basic 
shape for the uh, box. <coughs> and uh, what I've done is I basically created a square and I just butt ended them at 90 degrees. I, I, I was able to cut at 90 degrees, so basically I butt ended them both sides, I created two squares, and I've put this through, I put I put basically cross beams through. <coughs> Just need to sand it back. I've, I've glued and nailed it, and uh, I've only used one nail because then I can twist the frame into shape, and then the glue sets it into position. Um, bearing in mind it's going to be clad, and the cladding is actually going to give it most of the rigid strength, so I, I'm quite happy with that. So what I've got to do now is clad the base, uh, sand this back, sand this down, and then clad the base. So that's my next bit. Right, so what I did is when I created the ends, I used a square to square up the ends and then put it in. And I just did that all the way around. And it's square, it's square enough for the job, it's wood, remember. Now, what I'm going to do is take these and uh, slightly over, overdo it and then trim off because I've got a router I can trim off the excess using the router and so then I get something like that that's all I've got to do so just nail them in router around done so as I said I'm using wood glue and just a bead All the way around. Get into the gaps if you can. And then pin it into place. So the first one I'm going to do is the top one. Because I want to line that up as much as I can into place. Squidge it in. Line it up on the edges. And just use ordinary panel pins. I would say a small hammer. Make sure you've got plenty of. Might use longer pins. Short pins to place them. Then we use larger pins later. So we click tongue groove in, line it up on the edge, pin it. On the edge. And remember, it's a pirate chest. It doesn't actually. Need to be that smart. In fact, if it looks too smart, it's not going to be a pirate chest, is it? So that's now pinned in place. Okay. Actually, yep, that's that. I'm happy with that edge I can quite easily do, and then I just router the rest of it. What I might do is I might trim that off first and then router the edges. Just get the main bit off. But then use longer panel pins. Let's try and avoid the nails that's in the corner. So basically, just do it all the way around and then clean it up. Right then, clad it, as you can see. I'm actually quite pleased with that. Um, what I did is I did a short clad on this side and then I did a long clad on, on this thing and just basically just sand it back. It'll get sanding when I finished it. 
But I've got little little details like um, I had a cracked piece here in the wood, and uh, what I did is I've included it because I, I liked that effect. Um, if you look at the top, it's rounded at the top, and then you've got the end clad here. So I'm going to do something about cladding on this side. I have these as well, which is an L bracket. And you see, it's been used before. Um, so basically, something like that, maybe at the front, so yeah, something like that, just to cover the ends up, and it'll look like that. I'm quite happy with that, I'm really really happy with that. If I show you the inside, if I show you the bottom, you've got the bottom here, <coughs> which still needs sanding down. I think it's got one corner which is a little bit proud, so I can sand that back. I think it's this one here. No? Yeah, that's a little bit proud. So I can, I can work with that, not a problem. And uh, as you can see, that's actually in there. I put it on the base. And then if you look at the inside of the base, in there, I basically just uh, cut it. I've got a hole there, I don't really care, because it's a pirate chest. But, um, and then what I've done is I've glued all the way around the edges, and then as you can see, there is probably, uh, there's dust in here. And what that is, is I've, used, I've put the glue in, smoothed it down with water and a sponge, and what I did is I took a load of the sawdust and just shoved it in and just threw it in as much as I could in, put it around and then just padded it into the glue. Now when the glue's finished set in, I, can take, I, I hoover off the excess and uh, I can brush off the excess and then hoover it. So when I paint it, that wood will soak in the paint as well. And it, it actually does work. I've done it before. I've actually made um, fillers using sawdust. So I've got a bit of wood filler, I've got a hole I tell you, it, it, you can use a bit of clear glue, a little bit, of, a bit, little bit of sawdust. Mix it in, put it on, and what it does, it matches the wood. But there we go. That's the base done. Now the lid. Now the lid. I've still got a load of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on the lid there, most likely on the side. Yeah, that'll be on the side, and then create another rectangle on the top, and uh, then I'm going to do the curving of the lid. Now the curving of the lid is from a kindly donated stool. It's just the right size for the curving, just the right size. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, it's curved on the top, but it's straight on this edge, and that's the edge I want. But I've got holes in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these off, smooth it back. Doesn't matter. It's a pirate chest. So that's the, the bit I'm going to do next. So it's looking all right. It's looking good. I'm quite pleased with that. I'm very, very pleased. Right. Um, let's see. Okay, so I've got the box and I've put this trim on the side. I'm not sure about this trim because what I wanted to do was cap off the end of the front planks but because of this, it's not a very thin lip um, I put it on the sides and I'm still not sure about it but hey, it, it'll, it'll, it looks alright, not a problem um, it may give me, I, I, I'm still working on that but um, yeah, it's sanded down and I've got some wood that's sanded down now this I've cut to length, two straight, and two short pieces, which go in there. Now, as I said before, that's it. Um, I'm doing right angle because basically it, it tends to tie all together anyway. But what I'm going to do is going to glue and screw these dead on. The 90 degree cuts. I could do a decent 90 degree cut. I can't do a 45 degree cut at the moment. Um, I don't have the tools with me to do it. 
And as I said, I'm making this from scrap wood and this is sanded down quite nicely. Then, that seat on the end, actually, I'll do the flat edge out. I've sanded, cut and sanded these back. And what I've done, that's the right way. What I've done is I've, uh, that's this bit of scrap will do. But um, you can see the, 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 the shape of the lid. And then what I'll do is I'll figure out, you can see it overlaps ever so slightly. It's a 45 degree angle cut on there, which I can do on the flat one, flat stuff. Um, basically, it overhang, then I'll sand it back and it'll produce a, a nice little curve. And I'm looking at approximately cutting these into a third. So strip, strip, bang, 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 bang. And I think that's going to... I say a third. <clears throat> it almost wants to be a half, but I think it's going to be a third. Because these won't... There's something I could do, but we'll think about it. But <clears throat> that's so far. That's not bad. It'll do. Right. So that's that bit. It's looking alright, actually. So what I've done is I've glued and screwed the butt ends there and I've glued and screwed three points there, one there, one there. So when, when it all comes together, um, this, because this is flat, this is, this is 90 degree angle, so when this is flat it pulls this end, because I've got a screw going through there and that through there, then one through there, it pulls it together and straightens it up and it has actually straightened it up, as you can probably see there. So it's actually looking halfway decent. Now to clad the lid. Right, so I've got my strips of wood. See there. Cut down to the, to the length that I feel I'm comfortable with. And uh, what I've done is I've done, I don't know if you can see that, a chamfered edge at 15 degrees. It's a 15 degrees chamfer. Um, so effectively, it'll go like that. So as I as I nail it down, it'll go it'll go round. I'm going to nail it and, and, and uh, glue it. Um, if you notice, it's if you can see that. There you go. It's up at that angle. So basically, this is a smaller side. This is the longer side, and uh, that's that's. It, it took a lot of figuring out to do this. So uh, we'll work from there, and so basically, bottom chamfer, shorter edge on the inside, and just, uh, I'm going to pre-drill, pre-drill, straight through, and then just go around. So basically, I've done one already, so I pre-drilled the hole should marry up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue and glue and then drill into that side and then I'm going to nail it in so I'm just I'm just drilling um, pilot holes at the moment so get my glue little hint and tip you know you get these and basically you get a cap on them and the cap's next to useless I find sticking a screw in there actually keeps it fresh for longer so what we'll do a little bit on there, a little bit on there, get my nail, <coughs> now I'm using these nails, I'm just using short small headed nails and they should go through, there we go, that's what we like, and then just once that's in position couple of taps to keep that in position then adjust it and do this side
than that is that. Now you can see I've got an overhang here. That I'm actually going to trim off, but on the front of it, I'm going to put one of these slats on the front and then just sand it back. Um, mainly because, well, actually, no, this is the back. Um, I'm going to do that because I need to put the hinges on and I think that will work with the hinges. So I'm going to, it'll, it'll work, it'll work, it'll work. I'm sure it'll work. So next slap. Put some glue down. Put some glue down. Yes, I am using a rather lot of glue. But I rather have too much than too little. You can always get rid of it. So that goes like that. Too far. Take the nail, pop it in so it doesn't move. So, a couple of taps. Do the same on the other side. And that's it, and basically that's what I'm going to do all over the um, over the wood. And so I won't let you watch that, but that's what I'm doing so far. Right, so I've clapped the lid, got to sand it, sand it back, flatten it off, give it a nice curve. And I've got a belt sander and my goggles. Give that a go. Right, basically belt sander. On the top, give it a go. is where the hinges are going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on there and then I'm going to inset the hinges hopefully. We'll come up with something. As I say I'm making this up as I go along. So uh, just a bit of glue and some tacks. Trim that up, give it a little bit of a sand, and done. There we go, one box. Put the lid on, and it actually marries up bang on. A little bit of a gap, but that can be sanded back, or I might actually leave it. I quite like it. There are gaps in it, as I said, it's a pirate chest, it doesn't need to be perfect. So if you have a look at the back, you've got this lip here, and what I'll do is I'll put another lip in here, so basically bring that out and that's where my hinges are going to go on. So there's going to be another strip of wood along there, and that'll be my hinges. So I'll take a, oh, where are you, take another strip of this, put it in there, tack it on, and that's where my hinges are going to go. So there we go. Right, so I've got the got chest, like so. We've sanded it. It's fairly rounded. I'm quite happy with that. Fairly happy with that. And you've got the chest. So now what I've got to do is I've got to paint it. Now I thought about different stains. I've got beach varnish got antique pine and I thought about it and I tried it on a couple of samples 
and I wasn't happy with it. So I decided to get the finish that I want to make it look like um, it's been in basically on a boat, on a ship, piratey type stuff, is to burn it. <laughs> I'm going to burn it. So this should be interesting. So what we'll do is we'll do the base first. If it doesn't work out, we'll paint it. Quite literally. Just char it ever so slightly. Not too heavy. Do it this way. There we go. Let's see if we can get the gas to stay on. But effectively, I'm going to char it like that and I'm going to do something else. So there we have it. It's looking rather good, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what I've done is I've gone over it with the burner and I did it very, very slowly, time consuming. My hand is absolutely killing me at the moment, so I've got problems with my hands. Um, what I'm, what, uh, but what I did is uh, once I've gone through it, I gave it a sand of, uh, I gave it sanding down and also a, a good going over with some wire wool just to take it back from the black and, and bring up this patterning, which I think is awesome. Um, I'm now going to be using antique pine. There we go. Antique pine satin finish exterior interior exterior wood stay. Um, five years protection. Yeah, that'll do me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the base. I'm going to do the base, and then we'll do the top. So what I'm going to do work from the top down. The drips and just go with the direction the wood. This takes an hour to go off, and then you can recoat it in four hours. So basically, I've got it indoors, brought it indoors so it'll dry because it's cold outside, as no anybody's noticed. dry evenly. The corners are important. Try and go with the grain of the wood. Get it into the corners and go with the grain of the wood. As you can see, there is a difference. We've got definite difference there. And when it dries, it should dry darker. I won't make you watch all this. I'll show you when I've finished it. Right, just got the lid to do. Coming out all right. Going on quite well actually. And in this warm, it's going off quite quickly as well, which uh, I like. So you can see the difference just from first application difference. This looks so much better. Right there you go, it's stained. I'm quite happy with that now, it's actually come out the right colour. I'm actually really really happy with that. So I'll take that off, don't need that at the moment. What I'm going to do is these bits here same on the front and a bit on the back, 
is um, they're not actually wood. They're going to be metal. So I'm going to do a metal effect. And the first to do is to mask it off. I've already done the metal work on here. I'm just going to show you how I did it because I changed it. I did it once before and I showed you how to do it and then I changed how I did it. So what I've done is what I do. First mask off the area I want to paint. Carefully does it. Which is this top surface here. A little bit on there. That's the uh, bottom gun. So what I've got to do now mask off the top. There we go. So now I've got to spray it. it shouldn't be too hard. Take it outside to spray. Right. There we go. So what we're going to do is I've got some matte black spray paint. And all I do is give it a coat. There we go. I'm happy with that. Let it dry. Right, so now that's black. Got is some um, silver paint, water-based silver paint, and water-based varnish. And this is a clear varnish. So I've got a water-based. There you go, water-based varnish. Which I'm going to use this. Add a little bit of varnish to the cup. That's about enough. Don't need that much. And your colourizer. About a 50 50 mix will do. Stirry stick. Give me stirry stick. Mix it all in. There we go. Mix it all in. Basically, I've colourised the varnish. I take a sponge, just an ordinary sponge. Dab it in, get the excess off, and just basically dab it. And use the sponge to create a stippled effect. Get rid of the excess there, I'm happy with that. And so you've got this stippled effect, which adds a more realistic effect to the wood. And just lighter, lighter dabs with the sponge, and as it dries, it gives this black underneath stippled effect on the top. There you go, and you get this stippled effect and let it dry. Got the front, and what I need is a latch. Now, uh, I got this as a set for a pound. It's probably the, I think it's the only thing I've actually spent money on, and I got it for a quid uh, from a pound shop. Um, originally, it's supposed to go, let's see, like that. But it, it doesn't sit right, because this is wood, it doesn't sit right, it's actually a little bit proud of the surface. So what I'm doing, what I'm going to do, is I'm reversing it, like so. And it actually sits a lot nicer. And uh, I've got to put a backing plate to this, so there's a block of wood that will go on the inside so, so the bottom bit can screw, screw in. But this can just screw in straight to the top. 
I've aged the clasp. It was covered in a black plastic. I've burnt that off and I did an aging te the technique that I, that I like to give it this gun gunmetal grey finish. I mean, there's a little bit of plastic still on there but that actually for me works. And if you look at this one it's really nice. So I'm really really happy with that. So now I've just got to put that on there and as I said it'll sit on there like that. And uh, if I can find a very very old padlock, an old style padlock, I think this will look brilliant. Anyway, getting on. Right, there you go. It's finished. Got the clasp on the front. You've got all the metal work on the side. These drawing pins. I'm quite happy. You've got a tankard on the side, which is a hook. I'll show you how to do the aged metal at some point. On the back, you've got the hinges that stick out. Um, they're actually, I've, I've covered them with the same uh, mix of um, uh, varnish and um, silver paint. So actually that fits in really, really well. I'll turn it round. Turn it round. Opens up. Looks quite good. I've got the chain, which I also covered in varnish. It just makes it, it just yellows it. it it's not so bright. The same with the hinges. And basically, it, it, it's, it's, I haven't flush fitted it. I've fitted it to how deep I want it. So I recessed them. And then I um, did a top fit. Basically, I, I didn't cut out the wood behind it. But that's it. You have a look on the inside. You can see it's all stained, all varnished. Close that up. Look underneath. Look underneath. You've got these, uh, they're basically screws, which I can adjust the height to so make it level. But brass fitting screws, and it gives it little feet. Well, that's it. Project done. The total cost, 50p. Total cost is 50p. Because I made it all from scrap wood, bits and pieces I had lying around, a couple of old hinges. The only thing I paid for was that, which I got in a twin pack at 250p, of two for a pound. So that's 50p. I am looking to get an old English lock for here, an old English style lock, it's called an old English lock, padlock, and I think once I've blackened it up, once I've aged it, it'll look brilliant on the front of here. And that's it, job done, thanks for watching, bye bye YouTube.